Well, hi guys. I'm out here and hang out in my garden for a little bit. <laughs> I can spot here, I see several tomatoes that's turning uh, red. These beans behind me, they've grown up and turned and come back down. They're, they're all down here on the ground. I got, and I got beans that just, just keeps going. You know, just, these things just, they're just, they're, <laughs> They just overdone this, went down the other side, and, and I've brought them in from the fence over here, and, and they're coming over to the tomato vine, so I'm putting them back. <laughs> if, when they start blooming, I should have a lot of beans on this vine. We'll see. Those beans are, are uh, what they got out of, they found them in a cave, they say. <clears throat> so we'll, I don't know if they'll make or not. They sure put in a pretty vine. <laughs> All show, no go, right? <laughs> uh, today Saturday, July the 17th. No, July the 27th. I lost 10 days just like that. <laughs> I do that. Uh, Rebecca went down to the river today uh, to float. And so I thought I'd come out here. Look at that. Give me a bean. Man, these things are growing pretty fast pick one of them it's just the right size this is the right size of bean I've got a that, that there's loaded with them <laughs> I'll be having some more fresh beans today yep let's see what we got here <clears throat> uh, for our, our verse today is first Timothy 6 12 and what we do for those new to this channel is, is uh, we get a, a verse we're going through the book of Timothy now and when we get through this and we'll jump into second Timothy and do it a verse at a time uh, and find the references to it out of Paul's letters and we stick with Paul because Paul is our apostle for today there's two evangels in the scriptures one for uh, Israel one for the uncircumcision and one for the circumcision and uh, which is the Gentiles or the nations which is the body of Christ, uh, specifically, was for uh, Paul's evangel, right? So that's why we stick with with Paul's is for the two evangels. And uh, I'll leave these references down below the video. And we all we do is get the references to a verse, and and it might be one or two verses, but then we'll expound on it and get the get above or below it to make it pull together, and then bring in the next verse and line them up so that see how they read when you put them all together and i'll leave i'll leave these down below the video in the order that i read them uh, along with my email if y'all want to get a hold of me and uh, this is not just me doing this, this is a joint effort we've got alicia and, and judy and sterling helping me and marcia uh, put these together so it's a joint effort and i appreciate the help of the others to, to bring these out i'm the mouth i put them up and uh, everybody, we all work together on this, so it's a pretty, pretty neat. And unsearchable riches, which you can get in unsearchable riches on the concordic.org website, along with the scriptures. There, you can get them on there. Uh, and they also have Paul's letters, uh, large print, which is in a spiral edition. And I got it, and I put, I, I took it apart and put it in a, in a three ring binder with with sleeves so it's easier to get through but that's what I did and unsearchable riches volume 108 James Quorum writes the literal future allotment of the only life is our expectation in grace we find that in Titus 3 and Ephesians 2 5 through 7 the literal future allotment of our of the only life is our expectation in grace and will be granted even where there is persistence in sin we can't sin our way out of this <laughs> we can't therefore take the hold take hold of the only life here in first timothy 6 12 first timothy 6 12 says contend the ideal contest of the faith get hold of the only life 
for which you were called, and you avow the ideal of thou in the sight of many witnesses. That's our verse that we're getting these references from. So, the take hold of Eonian life here in First Timothy speaks of taking spiritual possession of Eonian life now. We are being given the awareness of our relationship that we have with God through His Son. It is our faithful relationship to the only true God, as well as with His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that we have this realization and experience. In the same sense, Paul sought to know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, confirm, for, conforming to His death. If somehow I should be attaining the resurrection that is out from among the dead. It's in Philippians 3.11 Paul entreats Timothy similarly to get hold of life beyond him. Right? And Alicia found this uh, audio from Bert Baker titled Get Hold of the Only Life or Life Yonian. What does get hold of the only life mean? We are talking about the saving power of God. It is God who saves us. It is God who calls us before times the Onian according to his purpose and his plan. It is Christ that all of God's power flows through. See, it's, it's through through the blood of Jesus that we have been saved, that, that sin is forgiven. Uh, his resurrection is guaranteed that we'll be roused from the dead also. He's a first fruit. You know, we're part of that. Paul tells Timothy to flee things and get hold of the only life. It means to take hold of this life that God has given us. What is in the only life that glorifies God and magnifies His grace and power? When we believe the evangel of the grace of God, God, <laughs> that's what it is. When we believe the evangel, the grace of God. God called Paul when he was a culminator and an outrager. Yet the grace of God overwhelmed Paul with love. Love overwhelms. Can you imagine Paul? You know, he was he was really bad. You know, he went around killing and wreaking havoc on the body, on those that followed Jesus, right? That followed Jesus. He was uh, really persecuting them. Huh. Paul tells Timothy to flee things and get hold of Eoni life. It means to take hold of this life that God has given us. Wow. When we believe the evangel of the grace of God, we understand this. It's just amazing. God called Paul when he was a culminator and an outrager. Yet the grace of God overwhelmed with love. That's amazing. We see this in 1 Timothy 1, 12-16. Paul says, Grateful am I, to him who invigorates me, Christ Jesus our Lord, for he deems me faithful, assigning me a service. I, who formerly was a culminator and a prosecutor, I mean a persecutor and an outrager, but I was shown mercy, seeing that I do it being ignorant in unbelief. Yet the grace of our Lord overwhelms with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Faithful is a saying worthy of all welcome that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, foremost of whom am I. But therefore was I shown mercy that in me, the foremost, Jesus Christ should be displaying all his transcendent, displaying all his patience, I'm sorry, should be displaying all his patience for a pattern of those who are about to be believing on him for Yoni life. I started to say displaying all his transcendent, transcendently <laughs> grace, you know, <laughs> but displaying all his patience for a pattern of those who are about to be believing on him for life yoni and that speaks of us uh, the body of Christ those that are coming into this understanding Paul is a pattern well the Debar translation which I like using the bars to uh, check the different translation and compare it to uh, the concordant the, trans the Debar says Wrestle the ideal wrestling of the faithing. Take the only life into which you were called 
and you like word the ideal like wording in the eye of many witnesses that neat uses a lot of the Greek elements in the writings so but we contend the ideal contest of faith the con the concordant literal says get hold of the only life for which you were called and you avow the ideal avow in the sight of many witnesses now these references I'll leave down below the video so we'll get those down there in the order I read them this charge I'm committing to you child Timothy according to the preceding prophecies over you that in them you may be warring the ideal warfare having faith and a good conscience which some thrusting away have made shipwrecked as to the faith now if God wanting to display his indignation and to make his powerful doings known carries with much patience the vessels of indignation adapted for destruction it is that he should also be making known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he makes ready before for glory us <laughs> whom he calls also not only out of the Jews but out of the nations also and we are aware that God is working all together for the good of those who are loving God who are called according to the purpose that whom he foreknew he designates beforehand to be conformed to the image of his son for him to be firstborn among many brethren now whom he designates beforehand these he calls and whom he calls these he justifies also and whom he justifies these he glorifies also and we ought to be thanking God always concerning you brethren beloved by the Lord seeing that God prefers you from the beginning for salvation in the holiness of the spirit and faith in the truth into which he also calls us through our evangel for the procuring of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ consequently then brethren stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us through our word or our epistle for which cause I'm reminding you to be rekindling the gracious gift of God which is in you through the imposition of my hands for God gives us not a spirit of timidity but of power and of love and of sanity you may not be ashamed then of the testimony of our Lord nor yet of me his prisoner but suffer evil with the evangel in accord with the power of God who saves us and calls us with a holy calling not in accord with our acts but in accord with his own purpose and the grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before times eonian. A holy calling. That means a calling set apart. We're set apart. A holy calling. Now, all I'm doing because of the evangel, that I may be becoming joint participants of it. Are you not aware that those racing in a stadium are indeed all racing, yet one is obtaining the prize? Thus be racing, that you may be grasping. Now every contender is controlling himself in all things. They indeed then that they may be obtaining a corruptible wreath, yet we an incorruptible. Now then, thus am I racing, not as dubious, thus am I boxing, not as punching the air, but I am belaboring my body and leading it into slavery. At least somehow when heralding to others, I myself may become disqualified. Paul says to slip on the new humanity. Slip on. All right? We're racing together. We're not competing against each other. We're competing for the evangel. For you remember, brethren, our toil and labor, working night and day so as not to be a burden to any of you. We herald to you the evangel of God. You are witness, and God, how benignly and justly and blamelessly we became to you who are believing even as you are aware how we were to each one of you as a father to his own children, consoling and comforting you and attesting unto you to be walking worthily of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And therefore we are thanking God unintermittently that in accepting the word heard from us, from God you receive, not the word of men, but of God. Let me turn my paper not the word of man but 
but according as it truly is the Word of God, which is operating also in you who are believing. You be sober in all things. Suffer evil as an ideal soldier of Christ Jesus, and do the work of an evangelist. Fully discharge your service. For I am already a libation, Paul says, and the period of my desolation is imminent. I have contended the ideal contest. I have finished my career. I have kept the faith. Not that I already obtained or in already perfected, yet I am pursuing, if I may be grasping also, that which I was grasped also by Christ Jesus. Brethren, not as yet am I reckon myself to have grasped yet one thing, forgetting, indeed, those things which are behind, yet stretching out to those in front. Toward the goal am I pursuing, for the prize of God's calling in Christ Jesus. Whoever then are mature may be disposed to this, and if anything you are disposed differently, thus also shall God reveal to you. Moreover, in what we outstrip others, there is to be a mutual disposition to be observing the elements by the same rule, the rule of love, to be loving one another, you know, not building the body in love, right? Consequently then, we may not be drowsing, even as rest, that we may be watching and be sober. For those who are drowsing are drowsing at night, and those who are drunk are drunk at night. Yet we, being of the day, may be sober, putting on the crash of faith and love and the helmet of expectation. The expectation of salvation. For God did not appoint us to indignation, but to the procuring of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sakes, that whether we may be watching or drowsing, we should be living at the same time together with him. For the rest, brethren of mine, be invigorated in the Lord and in the might of his strength. Put on the penalty of God to enable you to stand up to the stratagems of the adversary. For it is not ours to wrestle with blood and flesh, but with sovereignties, with the authorities, and with the world mights of this darkness, and with the spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials. Therefore, take up the panoply of God, that you may be able to withstand in the wicked day. And having effected all, to stand. Stand then, girded about your loins with truth, with the crash of righteousness put on, and your feet sandaled with the readiness of the evangel of peace. With all, taking up the large shield of faith, by which you will be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the wicked one and receive the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is a declaration of God. During every prayer and petition, be praying on every occasion in spirit, being vigilant also for it with all perseverance and petition concerning all the saints and for me, for that to me expression may be granted in the opening of my mouth with boldness to make known the secret of the evangel for which I am conducting an embassy in a chain, that in it I should be speaking boldly as I must. Now over all these, put on love, which is a time maturity, and let the peace of Christ be arbitrating in your hearts, for which you were called also in one body, and become thankful. Let the word of Christ be making its home in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing yourselves, in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to God, and everything, whatsoever you may be doing, in word or in act, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father, through Him. <laughs> now, to Him who is able to do super excessively above all that we are requesting or apprehending, according to the power that is operating in us, to him be glory in the Ecclesia and in Christ Jesus for all the generations of the eon of the eons. Amen. <laughs> That's our study for 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, and references to it. We love you all. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. 
I appreciate it. Thanks for the comments and and the phone calls. Yep, I get phone calls and that's really encouraging. And emails. Yeah. So thanks again. We love you and we'll talk to you tomorrow. See you then.